I'm going to vote for the libertarian, Gary Johnson. But plenty of people tell me it's a bad thing to do because by voting for a third party, I'll help elect Hillary. You mean to tell me that long come you libertarians take votes away from Trump or anybody else and we're going to end up with Hillary Clinton as the president because you want to get on the ballot and I don't get my tax cut, I get a tax increase and it's all your fault? Wow. In fact, the polls show that Johnson polls equally from Hillary as from Trump. But even at the Libertarian presidential convention, some people made that same argument. Hard decision, but I think I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. I am a libertarian, but I'm also pragmatic, and we have a uh, Supreme Court vacancy uh, that needs to be occupied, and I don't trust Hillary Clinton to uh, put in the right Supreme Court justice. Libertarian Michael Malice, a New York Observer columnist, uh, agrees with that. Uh, uh not necessarily. Um, I, I just think that Donald Trump is going to be far more effective at pursuing libertarian goals than Gary Johnson is effective at accomplishing anything. <laughs> Why? He's crazy, Trump. He says horrible anti-libertarian things. Well, Hillary Clinton earlier this week in an interview with Jake Tapper said, Trump insulting everyone, the press, politicians, is going to lead to a recipe for gridlock in Washington. Now, isn't that the libertarian ideal? You're not going to be able to roll back the state and put the car in reverse without putting the brakes on it first. Meanwhile, Gary Johnson won't even attack Hillary or Donald Trump, and I want someone who's going to attack the budget. And Trump will attack the budget? He talks about preserving entitlements. He hasn't mentioned cutting anything. Sure, but the point is, until you have someone who's going to delegitimize the political process and how things operate in Washington... He's doing that. He's absolutely doing that. Look, he's already taken on the Republican establishment and beaten them at their own game. He's not only defeated Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio, he's humiliated them so badly that Jeb Bush was reduced to apologizing to his mother on Twitter. Now, this is something that we can all get behind. But Jeb Bush was a governor who did a pretty good job Just in Just like Florida. Gary Johnson, right? Well, Johnson did a better job, but yeah. Bush would have been better than Trump, who wants to deport 10 million people, build this wall, bullies people, threatens people with libel suits if they argue with them. If there's one thing libertarians should agree on, it's that war is the worst thing that a government can do. And Jeb Bush has said that the Iraq war was not a mistake. So for you to say that Jeb Bush would be better than Trump, fine, you should just be voting for the Republican. Well, it's true. Trump did say that we should get our allies to spend more to defend themselves. Sure. I like that. And he said to bring the troops home, and he said, I'd rather be spending money on schools than on wars. That's certainly going the libertarian direction, isn't it? Yeah, but he says it here. He says it here. You can always cherry pick something out that sounds good. You know how you know a politician is lying? Their lips are moving. <laughs> so you have to go by their record. And the fact is, George, uh, Donald Trump has destroyed the careers of several Republican politicians. And if you're a libertarian, you should hope for the destruction of both the Republicans and the Democrats. Well, it's true the country does better in gridlock when yes. they're not passing a million bills. And the only two times in, in the last 25 years where we've gotten budgetary concessions were when the Republicans were acting like complete lunatics, when they shut down the government under Clinton and when they had the fiscal cliff emergency and everyone's like, these people are nuts, let's give them what they want. So the, I'm not saying that acting crazy will work, but historically acting crazy is the only thing that has worked in achieving budgetary concessions. So you'll feel good going to the ballot box and voting for Trump? Oh, no, I don't, no, I, I don't vote. But uh, my point is, if no. you're going to vote, you have a moral... Why don't you vote? Because I don't believe in it. But if, if you are going to vote, you have a moral obligation to have your vote count and make a difference. Like you said, Garrett Johnson is drawing equally from Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. So if you want to have a protest vote, that's not even a protest vote. It's not about conscience. No, he's that's... going to get more popular and he's going to win. We've never had a third-party candidate win. This time, it's going to about it's, to happen. Uh, yeah, that's magic. Their first times for everything. That's Bernie Sanders' magical thinking. In 1980, John Anderson was at 20% at this point in the election. Ross Perot was at 30%. In 1968, George Wallace was at 14%. None of these people ever got a single electoral vote. And if Teddy Roosevelt couldn't do it in 1912, uh, Gary Johnson is not happening. This time, the world has changed. Thank yes. you, Michael Malice. You tell me to vote for Trump, I hear malice in that. When we return, why libertarian ideas are just better.